is up my demons it is thursday man it's been a while since the big bad devil daddy himself has been on a thursday night but it's good to be back and uh as you know it's thirsty thursday So this is the time to get yourself something poured smooth. I don't care. Devil's lettuce. Go ahead. Don't care. Whatever you want to do, we're going to have a good time tonight because I have one of the hardest, hardest working uh, indie horror actors with me tonight, David Perry. And uh, sorry about that. I accidentally hit the button again. Holy shit. Uh, that's okay. We had some technical problems earlier, so they'll forgive us. Don't worry. What's up, Brother Cody? Make sure that you're sharing this out anywhere and everywhere for every horror fan because uh, David Perry has been in some of the finest uh, underground indie horror films, and we're going to be looking at that. But before we get into this madness, let's take a quick look at what all Morgrot Entertainment is all about. Check it out. <laughs> So that's right. If you're not following us yet on Facebook, please make sure that you are uh, to get all the latest updates, all the buzz about uh, myself and uh, uh, John Sorrell uh, appearances this year as we're going to be hitting some of the good old fun uh, horror cons and whatnot. So make sure you're following us. Hey, what's up, Achilles? So we are here with David Perry. How are you tonight, my brother? Hi, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what the fuck I just got myself into. Oh no. <laughs> hey, you know what? I mean, <laughs> hey, well, you know, this is um, this is actually um, it feels quite right. You know, it's um, you know, hey, war is my happy place. So I'm just, you know, I'm just really happy to be here, and I'm, just, I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's definitely a little bit different here in the underground. I mean, I've had uh, anybody from David Howard Thornton uh, to, to Joe Rosing and uh, uh, Beatrice uh, Boepley and, you know, all kinds of people. So it's all about get, bringing the best in art, dark art in the underground. And indie horror is definitely a, a passion for all of us here. So we are honored to have you here this evening. Uh, so why don't we just get down right to it, man? How did you get started? When did you know? Yeah, I, I would say that's the best way to put that. At what point did you know that you wanted to act in horror films? Well, let's see. Hmm. I don't know. Since I just um, realized how much fun they were, because I always, I always loved horror films, and you know, 
I guess mm-hmm. that's always been my happy place since I was, you know, since I was a wee kindergartner and, you know, <laughs> like describing Fright Night to all the all my kindergarten class and stuff. And then, like, they're like, oh, okay. You know, they weren't, like, freaked out or anything, you know, but it's like, it was fun, <laughs> you know. And so, but, like, later on as I, you know, as I got more into, like, acting and stuff, I was like, you know, I would love to do a horror movie. Like, when I saw... I and mean, I saw movies like Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer and everything. I was like, now that's the kind of stuff I like to do. And, you know, recently with, um, I saw uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. And I'm like, you know, oh, I want to do horror movies like that, you know? Hell like, I just yeah. wanna, like, if they're going to kill me, I just want a more dignified death, though. You know, just something like, you know, <laughs> something like, spoiler alert, the guy's mother got. I mean, I mean, I don't want to spoil it. Everybody hasn't seen it, but, you know. <laughs> But something oh, sure. in the like that, you know. But it was it was actually really good, though, very good, better than the first one. And I, I look forward to what they do with you know turning it into what the Pooniverse, as they call it. I'm yeah, like, okay, the Avengers you? for horror. <laughs> exactly, because I mean, never really been a huge fan of the Avengers. I like them. I mean, my mother was uh, she was the Avengers fan in the family, but um, I don't know. I've just always loved horror movies and. Um, and it's always just been something fun and exciting to do. Well, you know, and it, it, it's like a, almost like a fantasy world. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, I mean, we're surrounded by probably the worst fears ever, which is just life. So it's kind of like a fun <laughs> thrill ride uh, that keeps bringing us back for more. And uh, like yourself, myself, and many others here in the Morgrot universe, we look at a lot of these iconic, you know, horror figures as heroes, uh, even though they do horrible things. But we enjoy it. We cheer them on. Sometimes we're terrified and we like that. Why else would people, you know, go to amusement parks and, and, and ride, <laughs> you know, some of these death drops and stuff. So that's oh, yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and to piggyback off of that, I love you know, like, and I and I love how like you know, like cheering on the uh, the icons like Freddy and Jason yeah. and his face and Jigsaw and all of them and uh, and Art the Clown, what have you. And so it's like, if I look at it like this, they do it so that I don't have to. <laughs> That's the best answer ever. Yeah. I love it. Right, uh, so like. When I was a kid and stuff up until like, you know, like a little bit after high school, I was always drawing pictures of people getting killed, especially people I didn't like and stuff. Like one time I just, you know, I sat in the, um, I sat in my Dean's office. I was just waiting there for the bell to ring and, you know, I go to my next class or whatever, or the lunch period or what have you. I don't remember which, but, um, I just sat there. I had a bunch of, you know, construction art paper and I just, um, I just drew with, uh, with the pens I have, I drew like, let's see my English teacher getting killed. And then um, a couple of those students. And then like, I was like, okay, who else do I not like? Oh yeah, this person here. And I drew like, you know, I drew my, my junior high school principal getting killed in like a very oh hard day. Yeah. You know, did they ever see any of these though? Is that, that's the question. <laughs> they did. Oh they boy. Did. They so they thought you were it. certifiable. <laughs> They thought that before, so I was just confirming it, basically. So I was just like, you know. <laughs> but they saw it, and then a couple of years later, Oak Park Police would see it, and I'm like, that would be a whole other thing. And it's like, ugh. Like, what happened there? <laughs> but hey, that case got dropped, so that, those charges were dropped. Because, like, you know, and my parents, all that they, hired, they hired a damn good lawyer, too. They were like, oh, hell no. And then they hired like this lawyer that worked closely with Jesse Jackson at the time, and they said, you know, like what? <laughs> like y'all ain't putting him in jail for that. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of a stupid reason anyway, because you yeah, know they want they want to make an example out of me. You oh know? please. Forget that shit. <laughs> you can't yeah. tell me that there's not, you know. Uh, people that uh, maybe fantasize about that, you know, working at a job where there's just that one person they wish they could just, you know, take a hammer to or something like that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, be, you know, going home and then watching a good horror flick and somebody does it. It's like, yeah, I wish that was so and so. I mean, come yeah, exactly. on. That, that's that, that doesn't mean you're psychotic. 
Uh, but uh, did you ever, you know, have some opportunities uh, like during school or anything like that that you uh, acted in, you know, like any school plays or anything like that? No, I never got to that. But, you know, I was in drama class for the first, you know, like freshman and sophomore year. And then it was a lot of fun. You know, I was always shy and everything. And I was just, you know, I was slowly coming out of my shell and like, you know, really just like, just like, you know, how do you say, being what I was meant to be? Because I remember when I first started, it was like, you know, like I would hold a book of like poems up like in front of my face like this so nobody would see me and just read it there. <laughs> and like, okay, you know, we got to work on that, you know? So it's just like, and then, you know, I was supposed to be playing um, a king in a scene, like one of the scenes and stuff like that. I forgot, what is it? Um, was it Antigone, Antigone or something? I forgot which one would name the play, but I kind of just like kind of held on to like the the rafter thing, like and just doing right. my like that and stuff. And she's like, "No, you should be able to, you know, like you're a king, you know, you sit on the throne and you do this and that." And I was like, "Okay, cool." So I work on it, and then I just, you know, I came back again next time and next, you know, next play. I just, you know, I was like, "Hey, don't be shy. You know, they want you to do well and just, you know." Just, you know, become the character, have fun with it. Don't be in your head so much. That's why I got to keep reminding myself too. Like, like whatever, because I just recently did a casting workshop in LA where it was like, the casting director was like, okay, uh, that wasn't bad, but you know, like just try again. But next time, maybe just like, like just get out of your head and really be present in the moment. And I was like, okay, cool. So I come back and we do it again. And it's like, and then she's like, wow that was good. That was really good. She's like, you know, she's like, you just gotta just remind yourself just to stay out of your head and everything and just, you know, not think about it so much. So that's why I always just like, like, okay. Cause I'm always, you know, I always go back to being nervous when I'm like, when I feel like I'm on the spot, except for when I'm on set and everything, then I'm just like, okay, you know, let's do this. Let's just, you know, like, let's give it all we got. You know, we're here to have fun and, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not like you have a, a theater full of people that are, like, watching your every move yet. So it's like, you know, for, for those, you know, few minutes, those few moments, it's like, it's on. We're, we're you know, it's almost like we're playing a game of D&D &D here. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's their own character and, uh, you know, really brings that, you know, intensity up. Uh Cody Tudor, glad to have you watching, Ooh. brother. <laughs> hey, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, oh, stop making me blush. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> yeah, Cody, he's a great guy, you know. He's just... <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes, yes, he is. Excellent, excellent guy. Totally cool. Uh, supports all of Ordi uh, indie film and is uh, starting to do a lot more acting himself, which is really cool. So glad to have you, brother. Yeah. Um, He's so, wonderful on set, you know? <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, so you kind of took that experience, and at what point did you take your shot at, 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 at you know, uh, how did you find out, you know, whatever your first film was that you could – get into it and stuff like that oh um it actually happened on um can't say by accident or anything but like it was just it was part of a class assignment and everything because i was in um oh, cool. school you know finally in um I'm at columbia college chicago at the time and um it's the production class you know the first like foundation production class that we have to do to move on in the in the major and stuff and so um and so we were all just, um, cause we had to do, let's see, what was it? We had to do like a, a minute short, like out in Grant Park across the street, you know, by the lake and everything, you know, mm -hmm. they know film students go there all the time. So nobody bothered us filming in a public place. And then, um, nice. let's see what else happened. Then we had to do a group project and, um, and then we had to do the final project, which, you know, which we had to like pitch our, our, you know, our own films for the class. And we had to shoot it on 16 millimeter. And yeah, I had, I have it somewhere around here. It was, I just gotta, you know, it's gotta find that in the projector and just like kind of blow the dust off. Of it. Like, yeah. Does it still work or something? And so, um, 
the first one I did, I had like my mother and my sister and uh, my sister's sister-in-law in it. I was like, I was like, Hey, I want to be actors in it. Okay, cool. And then the kid who was assisting me, cause we were in groups, you know, he was acting in it too, you know, and my mother made a grim reaper costume. And so I just kind of <laughs> made something on the fly and stuff. And it was just like, you know, my, uh, my sister's sister-in-law was just, you know, she had really no acting experience whatsoever and it showed. And so like, and my professor was kind of giving me hell about it, but my sister and mother, you know, they have more performing experience. So they were, you know, they were better in it. And so, and he said that yeah, too. It was just so, an comfortability, you know? Yeah. And so, cause what happened was my sister was looking for, you know, her sister-in-law and then she found her, but she saw her like kind of popping pills and, you know, killing herself and she's trying to, you know, like get her and stuff. And then I had the effects, like the disappearing effect. It was, I was having fun with it. And then she sees her later on with the grim reaper, just kind of waving goodbye and they disappear, you know? So that was just like, that was just the minute long film I did. And then, um, and then, you know, Adam, the kid who was assisting me, like when, when it was time to do his, his Grant Park film, you know, he had me in it. So I oh, had me awesome. two, two different roles and I was talking to a pretty girl in it. And so it was really cool. And then the footage got messed up. And so now he had to like scramble and like, like put together a kind of really wild story. And it was like kind of a, you know, like, and we got footage of like, you know, a block of ice with like water shooting up through it and stuff. So we're just... We're just playing around out there and it was just like okay you know like oh look there's water over here and it's like i'm like is this a lake or something or a river or something i don't know about <laughs> and so he got footage of that and stuff and then um and then with the footage that can be saved and stuff it was like i'm seeing that and i'm getting possessed and he's got all this animation going on and i'm like oh that was so cool and everything you know and so that was like kind of my first like you know my first unofficial, like, well, actually, it's my first official acting role, basically. And then, um, and then when we did our group project, you know, they they had me act in it, and so um, it was like based off of this um, this old fable about this, you know, this this crafty little rabbit or something who tricks a lion or something, and so and so they updated it to like have me play like a robber or something like that, and then. You know, and then I rob the, I try to rob this girl, but she kind of convinces me to go rob somebody else. And then I go rob them. And get, <laughs> and get love busted, that. Right? It's like the police station was like right there. And it's like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> and then like we had, <laughs> we had a couple of PAs getting cop uniforms and like, you know, and have me get cuffed and stuff like that. So it was just like, you know, I'm being let off and everything. And people looking like, oh my God, what did they get him for? I'm like, I know, right? And it was like, because that was the first time also filming on a city street and stuff in the city. You know, we had to, we went to the, the film office in Chicago and we actually got permits and we got police assistant. And that cop was really cool too. You know, we just, we shut off that whole, not not the whole entire street. People could still walk through, but right, they couldn't right. walk through this movie location. Everybody's like, movie location? Where? Oh, where, shit. Where you? It's a, I'm like, I be yeah, it's filming right here. And they're like, <laughs> and, you know, some people were like, you know, I think some people did get to be like kind of extras in it and stuff like that. They get to like right. kind of walk by or something and see, you know. And it was just like, I guess they gave like a voice consent or something like that, even though the film was silent anyway. So oh, well. that was fun to do too. And then, um, and you know, from there it was, um, from there it was, how do you say, um, I just got kind of a reputation for being, you know, pretty cool at, you know, acting and being cool to work with and stuff. Cause then, um, I remember I was finishing up some work in the lab and I get a message from somebody. I'm like, who's this? And it was like, oh yeah, it was one of the kids that was a PA on our group project and stuff. So, and then, um, cause he's doing his final project. And then um, he was like, Hey, do you want to be in, in my final film? And I was like, I was like, sure. Okay. Yeah. And he's on campus. So I just, you know, I headed right over to his, you know, the student housing over there where he was at. And then mm -hmm. I got to play two roles too. I got to play a judge, you know, a hard nosed judge. And then I also played the Grim Reaper, you know, because like the character is found guilty. And then um, he gets like kind of, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He gets taken by the Grim Reaper or something like that. And that was just cool. I was like, you know, I'm like, hmm, I do want to play like more of these dark, you know, sinister type of roles and stuff. But then um, when I did my final project, I didn't act in it. I just, you know, 
because I pitched this uh, the idea to my class and everything, and then I had my professor who was just like, <laughs> yeah, he was a really cool Brazilian guy, you know, like almost like a little bit older than me, you know. He's so he's kind of like in our age group and stuff, and he's cool with us and everything. And so I pitched to the you know to the class. My final project is. Um, you know, a couple, they, they're kind of falling out because, you know, the girl just found out she's pregnant. The guy doesn't want the baby. And then, you know, one thing leads to another. She ends up dying in an accident. And then she comes back a year later, you know, after like having given birth to the dead baby and she shoves it down the guy's throat. So she shoves a dead fetus in the guy's throat, just like, oh, like that, you know. And then everybody was like, whoa. And then my professor, Miguel, he's he's a cool guy. You know, he was like, He's like, what the fuck is happening in your movie? <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening in here? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know. It's just something that you know I made up on the fly and everything. He's like, he's like, okay, we have to do this. Okay, we have to. You got to make it good or something. You know, got to focus and make it. You know, <laughs> have that Brazilian accent too. And I was just like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was really cool. Oh, I don't know how he's doing today, you know, because we still keep up sort of on Facebook and everything. Right, on. and you know. My mother, she had a really huge crush on him. She's like, "Yeah, he's um, he's pretty easy to look at." And I was like, "Ooh, I'm a tail dad." You said, <laughs> but yeah, dun, dun, yeah. My dun. mother, she, yeah, my mother, she was always very charming, very out there, out outgoing personality. God rest her soul. So yeah, and so um, yeah, and so um, so uh, one, yeah. one of your one of your fans has shown up. Phil, what's Phil going Hannah. on, man? Love How that day. <laughs> That's right. Don't fear the Reaper. <laughs> yes, you're not going to fear the Reaper. All right. You know, and Phil, you know, one of the, one of the best filmmakers that I've worked with that I never met in person. So it was right. like, and you know, I was in New York recently too, but it's like, you know, I was like, dude, next time, next time I'm in the city, man, Phil, if you, if you hear this, man, we got to, we got to link up, you know, because I got to see what you look like in person, you know. <laughs> me too. Yeah. I mean, I'm six foot two, but you can still stick me in a duffel bag. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, okay. You know, if you, um, I mean, I'm in Chicago right now. I mean, if you can make it over here when I, you know, when I get over to New York and stuff, I mean, I can put you in. I got one of my suitcases here. If you can contort or something in this one, I could probably fit you in this, uh, the Samsonite one I got, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I act like we do that all the time, especially if they're going to Hawaii or Paris or something. I'm like, hey, take me with you. I mean, yeah, I'm a lot, I'm a lot lighter than I look, so you know, just I can, you know, I can hunt down in the bag like this, and you know, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not as limber as I was probably 20 years ago, but uh, we might be able to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, we might. <laughs> So you had an interesting role uh, in uh, Phil's uh, I Slay on Cr uh, Christmas. Let us know a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, I got to film it remotely because, you know, Phil contacted me and was like, hey, you want to be in it? And I was like, sure, okay, cool. <laughs> like, what you got? And then he sent me like a kind of a rundown. And yeah, Cody says you saw him in a backpack. You know, Cody, I got you, man. I got you. Yeah, and if anybody's saying it, I'm like, enough in, a, in a suitcase as well. Okay, yeah, you can come too. He you know, you and Cody can both here. be in the same. Just got to fit between some of my clothes and everything. So we all good. We got you. So, yeah. So now getting back to I play on Christmas now. So Phil had, um, he contacted me and was like, like, hey, you want to be in it? And I was like, sure. Okay, what you got? And then so he sent me like a rundown of what, you know, he wants me to do. And so basically, like, I don't know. Well, I mean, people have probably seen it by now, but. So I'm watching something and I get possessed by it, like, and I turn all demonic and stuff, and I start regurgitating like some blood, like vomit shit and stuff like that. This Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and then so that one, and as I was telling you earlier before we went on, before we went live, I was like, I had to pay homage to Demons, one of my favorite movies from the '80s, you know. Yes. Like shout out to Jaretta Jaretta and Bobby Rhodes and stuff, man. Y'all the best, you know. Like the first celebrities I became friends with when I was, you know, came, came in the business, you know. Awesome Indeed. people. Yes. And so what I did was I mixed um, what is it? Um 
like mouthwash with a uh, vegetable oil and uh, some shrimp cocktail sauce. You know, it's very, um, very sweet and very tangy and stuff. And I was like, I drank some before I turned the recorder on because I, I can turn it on with my, my palm and stuff. And I'm just like, I drink it and I'm just like trying to hold it in while I was waiting for the record thing to come on. I'm just like, okay, it's, it's here, it's, it's here. <laughs> yeah. And I just start convulsing and then I start like growling and snarling and then I just, you know, I start turning into a demon, you know, so I, and then I, I get up and run or something like that. I guess I got to go make a cemetery, my cathedral and whatnot. So <laughs> that's what we got to do. You know, when you're a demon, you make a cemetery, your cathedral and the cities of their tombs. Right. Right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine what that must've tasted like just thinking about it, it you know, it was, uh, uh, I would not be able to keep that down. You probably won't, you know, and it's like, okay, like when you had a bar or something like that, it's not the new drink you want to try. So it's just like, you know, like make me a demon vomit, and like, like fireball or some shit or whatever. Cause it was kind of tangy too. And it like, it didn't burn or anything, but I felt like if I held in there longer, it probably would start burning, you know, with the cocktail sauce and the, oh, yeah. the mask and mouthwash. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> My mouth felt like weird for a little bit after that. So I was like, I actually gargled with some real stuff. And then I showered afterwards, like, like, oh my God, what the fuck did I just do? I'm like, I, I made whole. That's I'm what out. I did. Bro. I <laughs> must get <laughs> clean. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I do too. You know, the film's amazing. You know, we got to, I'm like, dude, come on, man. We got to meet in person. Come on, man. <laughs> He's like that, that untouchable guy. He, 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 he comes out of nowhere. He talks to you. He tells you, you know, all these great things, loves your work, you know, and all of that. But yet no one's ever met him in person. And he's like done all these amazing collaborations. Um, yeah. And I, I'm just uh, happy as hell that you got to be a part of one of those. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Such a good yeah. dude. And I was also in this film, The Owen Brothers, with him and Joel Wincoop and stuff. That was yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, it's another one that I did remotely, and I was just like, "Oh wow!" You know, so it was like um, it was like a true crime drama reenactment kind of thing. And I was like, "Okay, I like these. You know, I want to do more more of this stuff." You know, although I can only stomach so much true crime after all, because I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> I was like. Yeah, let me okay. Let me check my windows. I saw the Night Stalker one, and it was like, oh shit! <laughs> I saw that documentary, and I was like, wow. I mean, I know they long caught him, and he died in prison a long time ago, but it was still like just so because I was I was just new to Los Angeles at the time as well. So I'm just like, okay, let me let me check and make sure the doors is locked and stuff, and make sure the windows are locked. Even though I'm on the 27th floor, I don't know if he's gonna like climb up through the window that way. But still, I'm like. You know, I'm looking at all those, you know, Stranger it's, things have happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh my God. Honest. I mean, oh, yeah. shit. Um, and actually, uh, well, we'll get to that shortly. Uh, but uh, let's let's dial it back a couple of steps. So what was your actual first feature? My first feature any? film. Wow. OK, so. um. That one was called Periods of Rain. It was, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was written and directed by, let's see, what's his name, Jason Blackwell. He was, uh, he's not was, but he's a friend of mine. You know, we haven't haven't talked in a while. You know, it's a long story and everything. And we used to go to church together, and we kind of like, you know, just kind of just kind of bonded over the fact that we both love films and we wanted to make films and everything. And um, I was still at Columbia at the time, and then. Um, I know I had like, I, I did an audition for it. I had auditioned for two of the roles. I'm supposed to be like one of the mean jock characters and stuff like that. But then he was like, okay, cool. So you're not right for those parts, but here, I'm going to write you this role instead. I'm like, okay, cool. What you got? And so, cause he told me, I'm like, oh wow. Okay. I'm like, I can do that. I can be a mean like drama student and stuff. I'm like, you know, I can be like, yeah, you know, I, I had a co-starring role on CSI Las Vegas. And so I, I know a few things about acting and, you know, and so basically my character is kind of like just ripping apart the, um, the main character's work. And then that kind of serves as a catalyst for how he, um, him and his love interest start, you know, start talking to one another. And I'm just like, yeah, it was, 
it felt pretty flat. So I was just like, yeah, I was telling them that and everything. And she's like, well, no, I don't think it felt flat. I think it was wonderful. And all of a sudden, I forgot how she said it, but you know, <laughs> but that was like my two lines. And I was just like, okay, my first feature film, and I only got two lines in it. Hey, Meryl Streep had two lines or, for her first feature, probably, you know? So it's like, hey, everybody started somewhere, you know? Damn Skippy. Yeah, I so. Mean, I started out as a as an extra as a zombie, um, you know, and and now I'm I'm getting to uh, speaking roles. So I mean, there's stepping stones out there in the Morgrat universe. Stepping yeah. stone, don't be afraid to take it. <laughs> exactly, you know, and it's it was fun, you know. It was, it was very um, it was a great experience, and I you know I love the theater space that we shot it in. It was like a a nice little 99 seater like way up north and everything and it was just like nice I'm like wow so i'm like you know and then every time i step into a theater space i always you know i always have a good feeling you know it's always something that's like okay you know like something about this feels right you know and so sure. um i mean it, it, it's wonderful to hear that uh because you know some some actors you know you especially you know mainstream ones are like, oh, my first film was horrible. Oh, it was, you know, drama or, you know, something crazy happened and it was just a terrible experience. So the fact that your first experience was so good, um, you know, it's a true testament uh, to indie film because I've yet to walk onto a set that didn't feel good, you know, and I'm sure at some point maybe that could happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've all been kind of blessed in that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, mostly. I mean, like, I mean, if some like some sets weren't without its drama and everything, and it's like, you know, some some stuff like, you know, I don't hear about until later. Other ones, it's like you're kind of directly involved in. It's like, okay, you know what? This is not good, and you know, we need to just kind of. And I'm like, you know, there was one. Now, unfortunately, I'm not really ready to talk about that, but it was with a kind of a, not a super famous actor, but it was like kind of a, he is sort of famous. And I'm just like, hey, you know what? I'm like, okay, y'all better get him. I'm like, y'all better get him because, you know, the West Side of Chicago going to come out and it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be me. <laughs> Like the west side of Chicago and the semester I spent in Brooklyn is gonna come out and um, <laughs> <laughs> nobody not wants to be so nice. <laughs> you know, not I, mean, so nice. Just, I, I might have like, to kiss somebody. <laughs> exactly. I kind of I kind of feel like, you know, just because it's indie film doesn't mean that you you know, you've done this, you've done that. That doesn't give you a right to have a, you know, three hundred and fifty pound head about it. Yeah. Um you know, you always should present yourself professional, no matter what it is you're getting paid, or even if you're not getting paid at all. It's called being a good human. And uh, just yeah, from exactly. talking with you here thus far, I mean, you are a fantastic human. And oh. uh, that's a lot so. of why I think you get a lot of roles as well, because, you know, you talked about the fact that you were able to adapt, you're moldable, you know what I mean? Uh, you take good direction. And that's one thing after I, I, I've interviewed so many directors, you know, and um, that's the one thing they, they talk about. It's like the best actors to work with, like they take direction well. Um, and, it, and it seems like you really do that. Uh, and everybody out in the, the more universe there in the comment section, you know, has has definitely attested to that. So that's incredible. So. Um, let's get into uh, some of your other work, uh, yeah. and one in particular that I thought was so good. Let's talk about this one, the great Will Colazzo. <gasps> oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, the first film where I get, um, actually, first billing, not just top oh. billing, but first billing. It was like like, you know, when you, when the movie's on, I saw my name first appear as one of the cast. I'm like, oh, my God, I get first billing. Oh, I've arrived. So oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh, my dear. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was just like, wow. And that was like, um, that was one. I mean, I wouldn't say it's my favorite, favorite role because I, I loved all the roles I played and everything. That's I always have fun with them. But this one, I was like, wow, you know, I feel very honored that, you know, 
Yeah, because when I read the first script, I was like, okay, you know, my character is probably not a lot in this. And then um, actually, what how it was originally sold to me was like, um, well, I mean, of course, I was already sold because I, you know, I was, I, you know, I love working with Will. He's just amazing. You know, we became like really good friends. You know, me, him, Julie. You know, we just he's such a great guy. He is just the absolute best. You know, and it was like. And he was one of the uh, the first, not the first, but like one of the, well, actually outside of Chicago, basically the first, one of the first outside of Chicago to actually take a chance on me. Like, cause other people were like, okay, well, if they don't know you, like if they didn't see any of your films from the past, they're probably not going to want to, you know, but I was like, okay, you know, I was just like, you know, I contacted him. I was like, trying shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so it's like, might as well. And it's like, okay, well, if not, I'll just try again later. And then, um, that one though, I was um I was on my way to um what was it Evansville, Indiana to do another film, and then um, you know Will messaged me and asked me if I wanted to be in it because actually you know David Sterling, um over at Sterling Entertainment, he actually suggested that I be in it. He's like, oh yeah, you gotta get David Perry in it, and I was like, oh really? I was like, because I met him like a year before. Yeah, I met him a year before, and I didn't think. I mean, we, we kind of, we hit it off. We was cool and everything, but I didn't think I made that much of an impression on him, but there he had, there it is. And I was just like, oh, and then of course, later on, he tells me that, oh, like he wants you in a graphic sex scene with, with Jamie Morgan. And I was like, wait, with who? And I was just like, and I looked around, I was like, oh, Jamie Morgan. I was like, she's going to be in it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm nervous now. I'm like, Oh my gosh, she's amazing. She's been in a lot of stuff. And I'm like, oh my God. But when I met her on set, finally, she's just it was like we've been working together forever. She's just that much the best. And, you know, I hope she's feeling great now because, you know, so Jamie Morgan, if you can hear me, I love you, babe. You know, you're amazing. You know, she's amazing to work with. And, um, and you know, the, the sex scene in that film wasn't all that graphic and everything. And, you know, we were okay with it. And, you know, we had a, uh, an intimacy coordinator on set and everything. And it was, you know, very it's contained, very close. And they edit it, you know, just so it won't be too graphic. And I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, but I do warn people that, you know, I do strip down to my draws in this one. So, I mean, if y'all if y'all ain't ready to see all my chunky goodness hanging out, then, I mean, just, you know, you might want to. <laughs> yeah, and my, cousin, my cousin was like, yeah, I'm going to have to skip that one. I'm like, yeah, go on. Because, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> like, you're still like. You're still a kid in my eyes, so no, you can't see this. <laughs> no, I love, him. I love him though; he's great. But that one was just a really great experience and everything, and um, we just had a wonderful time on set, you know. I've, and it was, you know, like they said, the first, you know, Camp Blood movie to be filmed on an actual campground because it was like it was off season during the winter months, so it was like it was freezing, it was raining, and so it was just. But we, you know. You know, what do they call them? The yurts or something like that. Not the tents or anything or cabins, but they're called yurts, I think it was. Yeah, I think that's what they're called. That sounds we were in, right. Yeah, we stayed in one of those, and it was um, it was really nice, very comfortable and everything, very warm, you know, but of course, it was too warm. I had to open a window because I don't like overheating and stuff. <laughs> but um, <laughs> It's like I'm always telling it, folks, you know, us bigger folks, man, we hold the heat in. We're like furnaces. It's great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so it was like, <laughs> yeah, but then there was like, oh my God, the hot water was tricky though. So like when it was time to shower and stuff, it was like, yeah, see, I'm like, you know, I can handle cold air, but not cold water. You know, I'm, I'm weird like that. So it was just like, okay. I don't think anybody can. What the hell? <laughs> like, okay, I'm, too, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to shower in the morning. I'm just like, okay, this is not going to work, okay? So I'm like, and then they're like, no, wait a minute, you got to do, it was like some kind of, um, I think I had to turn the water on on the sink or something like that, turn the hot water on on there. And then like, and then the water was like, it was a lot warmer and stuff. Like it wasn't like super hot, but it was like warm. And like, it was like, I could kind of tone the, the warm blasts and stuff like that. Cause then it would get cold for a little bit. And then I can just, you know, like mush up against the shower wall and stuff when it gets cold. I'm like, okay, ugh. Okay, it's warm again. 
la di da di da di da <laughs> So yeah, you know, so I took longer showers than usual because it's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Cody. We're leading the charge for you, brother. Yep. Like chunky We're guys do, right? Back. We're bringing <laughs> sexy back. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know. <laughs> yep. Fantastic. Uh, he is definitely on my list of directors to to work with uh, in a dream situation. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, and oh, I'm so excited to talk about this one because I'm a huge fan of it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Will and I, when I had Will on the show uh, about it, ah, it's probably been about a year since I had him on. Uh, we talked about it and I was like, this film was so fucking good. Oh man, I've watched it more than once. Oh Night yeah, Night of the Zombies. Yeah. Night of the fucking Zombies. I love it. It was Five Nights for uh, Freddy or Five Nights with Freddy before that movie came out. Exactly. Yeah, so it was really better in in my opinion. Nothing oh, against yeah? uh Matthew Lillard, but um oh, I, I, I I just I dug it but like it was it, I don't know. Um it seemed more real to me. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it was a lot of fun too, and that was um, that was my first time filming in Vegas, actually. You know, and that was so that oh, was like, uh, yep, I was like, I went over to Las Vegas for the first time, and then oh shit, that was like a whole new world to you. It kind of was, you know, casinos, slot machines everywhere, and so I was just like, oh, nice. Even in the hotel room, just you know, it's kind of. Had a little one by the bedside. No, not really. I'm just kidding. That's just how. No. Was. <laughs> but that was just, you know, and actually, like, one fun fact, I've been to Vegas, never gambled once, never felt the need to, because I was just afraid of losing control, because that you know, would be like, but that's another story. But getting back to the zombie rules, you know, originally, that was supposed to be a uh, zombie movie. And, um... You know, Will had like a big cast attached to it and everything. And so, and that's when I first contacted him. I was like, yeah, you know, I would love to be in it. I've already been in a zombie movie before and it was a lot of fun to do. And then, and then originally I was to play like some kind of like some kind of soldier or something like that, some kind of black ops thing you know, where it was like, okay, we, we raid some lab or whatever. And then there's a zombie in there and I get bit by one and I get shot in the head. So I'm like, Okay, so it's not the biggest role, but hey, you know what? It's something. It's a way in, you know. So, exactly. so that was really cool. And then, um, and I was supposed to, because I was doing a movie in um, in L.A. already, and then I had to fly to New York to do that one. I was planning to, and then something happened, and then there was like a lot of changes and stuff. There was a big script change, and I was like, okay, cool. There's a script change and everything, and then oh, the dates were now being pushed back, and so. Then I get the new script. I'm like, I thought it was Night of the Zombies, but I read it wrong. I was like, oh no, Zombies. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I was like, well, let's read and find out. And I'm like, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, okay, yeah, what the? Oh, wow. Oh, right. shit. Oh, my God. Like, oh, cool. Oh, my God. And I'm contacting Will. I'm like, dude, we got to do this movie. And then also, um, around the same time, I had met Sean C. Phillips. And then, you know, right. Then like he, I guess he heard about me on uh, Shadow Marsh or something like that because we were both in that one. I didn't meet him on set, but um, we became friends on Facebook. And he, you know, he contacted me and asked me if I wanted to be in um, his directorial debut, Screen Bloody Murder. And then I was like, I was like, sure. You know, he was like, he was telling me how it's a throwback to '90s slashers and stuff. And I was like, okay, I love the '90s slashers, you know. So yeah, of course, count me sure, in. You know, what, what you got for me, you know? And so. And then we met uh, for the first time in person on Zomgools, and I was like, I was like, oh, there's Sean C. Phillips. Okay, just be cool. Okay. And I'm like, okay, that must be Will walking around. He's wearing a mask. So I'm like, okay, I think that's him. And so, because I'm, you know, because there I'm still meeting everybody for the first time, except for Mike Ferguson, who was also in it. And I met him before, and I was like, oh, he remembers me because we were in Shadow March together. And, you know, we weren't in any scenes, but we met that's on such set. A cool before. dude, man. Oh man, the absolute best. I love Mike Ferguson. It's like and you then, know the Undertaker and the Hulk put together. <laughs> yeah, you know. And he was really good in that too. I was just like, I'm just like kind of hanging back and you know, like like listening to him film his scene, and I'm just like, 
oh wow i'm like this guy's intense okay you know he's bringing it and i'm like i'm like wow i'm just so excited because i'm like i'm actually here and it's like you know i'm just watching this you know like you said this brand new world opened up to me you know even though i've been i've been in like show business for for quite some time i was i'm still like it's still feeling like the first time and stuff and i'm meeting everybody and then um like I met Felissa Rose for the first time because she was on set, and oh, I was like, yeah. I saw her in her cute red dress and everything. And I'm like, is that Felissa Rose? I'm like, it looks like her. And I'm like, okay, just be cool. I'm like, so I'm kind of hanging back and everything, and you know, and Will, we, we talked briefly, and he's like, hey, you man. Yeah. So well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's you like, know, hey, I, you know, I, I always make that mingle. joke. We say what? Yeah, yeah. I said I always make that joke because you know. If, you mean if you if you have you know anybody out there in the Morgan universe has ever met her before, you're always like, love Jen, sleep away camp. <laughs> yeah, and I told her that too. I just walked right up to her, and, you know. I walked right up to her and I said hello and everything. And she's like, Hi, she's really cool. And I was like, and I told her sleepaway camp is like, and I mean it too. It's like that film was so iconic and everything. It's like and ahead of its time too, you know, especially with the whole, you know. Exactly. Like we call it the whole gender identity thing and stuff like that. And, you know, it was like questioning, you know, it was like, it was bringing that to the forefront before it was like, like 40 years before it was a thing. So I'm like, Hey, you know, shit, my hat's off to you, you know? And then, and the ending is like, it's still forever. One of the most iconic horror endings, you know? Oh, for sure. Reveal and stuff. And she's just like, Ugh. and you see the extra. I'm like, Oh wow! I'm like they actually did that because the way I saw it was I saw a Sleepaway Camp two first, you know, because like mm -hmm. every time I went to the video store, Sleepaway Camp one was always checked out or it was just gone. But yeah, Sleepaway Camp two was there, and so, and then I didn't see three until like what, like a few years after that because it was it wasn't at that Blockbuster, but it was at another video store I went to, and so I rented that, and then um, and then at the I same time. Those days. Yeah, I do too. You know, that that made my weekends and stuff. And that was like, you know, it was something to live for. You know, it was like, I mean, I knew there was, I mean, it was like kind of an early sign that, you know, hey, this is going to be your life, you know? And I'm like, what, working at a video store? Because that's what I ended up doing too. I was just, I was hanging out there so much that the lady there just gave me a job. And I was like, okay, cool. I've been working on a movie. I'm in high school at the time. So it was just like, you know. So it was like, you know, I didn't even tell my parents that I got a job. I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going out for a little bit. I'll be back later. And then, and then I come back late because we, you know, had a late night. And my mother was like, where were you? I'm like, oh, I got a job. And so <laughs> I'm like, I'm working on video magic. Up up. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that was I did that actually um, because yeah. when I was uh, when I was teaching, because uh, I was a music uh, high school teacher for uh, 24 years. Um. I would always have like a part-time job and it was like when it wasn't blockbuster it was uh i think it was called like family family video yeah that's what it was oh, yeah i've seen them before too i've never been there but um i had uh, some of my earlier movies were there like it was yeah, there for yeah. stuff. and i was like oh cool <laughs> so i was like you know what I, I, that I, I, yeah it's like I, I spend half my life here anyway, so why not get paid for it? And there was like a job opening, and I'm like, yeah, I need a few days to, you know, make a little extra cash being a single parent. So uh, I was like, sure, yeah. pay me to talk about fucking movies all day. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like for Halloween, you know, Halloween time, you know. The staff had to do like their their picks for the you know for the holiday and stuff. So like, and then one of one of my coworkers, she never watched horror movies, so I was like, so she didn't know what which ones to pick. So I made her picks up for her, and I was like, okay, cool. So this one's more <laughs> like maybe like we'll go vampires for your for your taste now. And I'm just like you know, <laughs> and then I put Faces of Death in there too, just just for the oh, hell of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was always fun. So it was just like those were fun days, and I was just like, you know. So I, I lived in the horror section, and then you know, I even got to go in the back room and stuff too, because I was like, I, I had to put some stuff away up there, you know, and other people couldn't do it. And I was like, 
yeah, I'll do it even though I'm only 15. I'll just, you know, no one has to know I went back there, you know. I just went past the beads and everything, the beaded little, you know, those little thing with the, and I was looking around, I'm like. <laughs> it's a whole new world, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Who the fuck is, you know? And then I was like, you know what? And then I was also like getting the idea of combining like porn with horror and everything, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, I mean, trauma, trauma's been knocking that out since the 80s shit yeah you know that's, that's another one I, I wanted to get on board with was trauma movies too because I was like because even when I was a kid I was also like you know making up like x-rated horror scenes and stuff and everything and so like one like my I'll, I'll admit my 7th grade teacher I hated her so much you know she was like and she was a nun too so it was just like you know what I'm like, ooh, I got something for that ass. So I'm like, you know, I'm just like the worst way you could kill somebody, you know? And I'm like, I drew this demon character that kind of was um, anatomically correct. And um, <laughs> let's just say um, he forced that anatomic correctness in her mouth and out the back of her throat. <laughs> Sounds like something out of Glenn Danzig's playbook. You know, yeah, I don't know who that is, but um, you know, he needs to call me up and we can talk, and, you know, we can do lunch, right? <laughs> and, <you know. laughs> he was the lead singer of uh, the Misfits, Danzig. Oh, Sam. yeah, yeah, I think I remember their artwork, I loved it, you know. <laughs> yeah, he, was, you know? he went and he started his own comic book company too. And let me tell you, uh, some of what you just said is, is kind of like in there. Uh, so not not too far of a stretch. <laughs> awesome stuff. Whether you like his music or not, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, but he's always know. been one of those one of those guys that kind of likes that that type of 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 graphicness. Let's put it that way. Uh, definitely not too far out of my wheelhouse as well. <laughs> yeah. The most so, I know of is Cannibal Corpse and everything because I remember. Um, this one kid in my class named, uh, what's his name, Charlie something. Yeah, Charlie Shaw, I think his name was, right? He signed my yearbook with a, a Cannibal Corpse lyrics. And I was like, what the fuck did he just? And I was like, Cannibal Corpse? Oh, I heard of them. I'm like, what are these guys got or something? And I was just like, <laughs> of course, I wouldn't listen to their music for like another few years or something like that when, you know, YouTube becomes a thing and I see their videos. And I'm like, oh, cool. And then I, and they had, they had some really cool t-shirts that I bought and I was like, oh wow, you know. <laughs> it's guys, like even guys. if you're not a fan of the music, you can appreciate the art because obviously it's death metal, which you know yeah. is definitely a love of mine. Um, but the artwork was always so extreme, and it's like anything that pisses everybody off, I love it. Yeah, I loved it too. I was like, you know, I'm like, see, this is the stuff that I was like, I'm looking at, I'm like, man, all this stuff was, you know, it was like affirming that little kid that, you know, kind of just stayed off to himself and drew horror pictures and, you know, told horror stories, you know, like I was in, uh, what was it, uh, third or fourth grade or something? Yeah, I think it was fourth grade. I um, I had just seen Cellar Dweller for the first time. And then so, um, oh, what a good course, one. I burned my class picture hoping that, you know, they would get burned up too. You know, it's a long story. <laughs> and then, of course, I cut my picture out of the fold, you know, because I didn't want to burn up with them. I'm like, no, nah. I'm like, you know, and then I drew like pictures of Cellar Dweller, like, you know, like tearing them from them, from them one by one. And then um, my teacher at the time, I, you know, I had her getting, getting it a little bit. And then um, not as brutal as her grandchildren, though, like those little bastards they were like they were in their grade i think they were younger than me or something like that and they were just little terrors and stuff you know because they knew their grandmother was one of the teachers there this you know this sort of medea type and stuff you know that who did not play not no games whatsoever but you know thinking back now she was she was really cool i loved her you know and she loved me too so she was just you know that was just a fun time but still i just you know i was just how do you say um venturing into my happy place, which was horror, and um, and people who couldn't make the cut just had to, to get cut. They had to get cut. So it was just like, you know, 
I had Cellar Dweller just like, you know, I wrote a little sequel and everything. Cause I think I told, who is it? Um, I, I mentioned something on Twitter or X now. I, to, uh, who is it? Mancini or something like that. And I told him, yeah, oh, Cellar Dweller. I remember that one. When I was a kid, I wrote an unofficial sequel to that, you know? <laughs> and uh, okay. that's one of the great things about, uh, you know, the, the fan film world. Uh, yeah. Which has, like, become really good, uh, which um, actually we can roll uh, one of your trailers. Oh, right yeah? About you. Uh, absolutely. Uh <laughs> Let me just, oh my goodness, stop it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm finding it. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's, it's there somewhere, right? It's, it's good, though. Exactly. Um, and I need to put a stop on it. There we go. Uh, because, you know, technology as wonderful as, no, it's not wonderful. Um, <laughs> it never oh, yeah. works the way we want it to. Uh, yeah, but, uh, uh, you it were. I trying to replace us. <laughs> uh, I don't even want to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but um, we're going to take a quick look at uh, one of the great fan films that you were uh, a part of here, Scream Legacy. Just got better. As soon as hey, from Stream I'm so though. excited right. to announce. And there we go. And yeah, we can skip. Okay. Great. Hey, you need help with your luggage right there? I just have one bag. Thanks, so. though. Is your grandpa still up? Uh, I don't think so. He's probably in bed by now. There's no escape. I can't wait to need a hit. Baby, give me a hit. You're dangerous. I'm loving it. Holy shit. Um, yeah. Oh my God. Gritty, my go viral. Yeah. <laughs> gritty, like, I mean, this production is so good in every way. Every actor, amazeballs, uh, because I had the pleasure of watching this. And so do you out there in the Morgrat universe. You can go to YouTube. Uh, and uh, watch it right now, as a matter of fact. So you better put it on your, your list of things to do this weekend, uh, especially if you're a Scream fan. So uh, definitely um, <clears throat> check it out, uh, because I don't know. This is one of those films I wish could have went to the big screen and actually been part of the franchise, because the storyline... Yeah. The storyline is so good, you know? Yeah. What was it like being part of this? Because, I mean, we're talking about 4.4 million views. That is yeah, huge. Yeah, amazing. You know, it's just like, and I'm still just like, wow, because it went like, I think it went viral over the weekend almost, like, or it went like viral yeah. enough when um, it went like, it's like how do you say it's viral fate was sealed when uh jamie kennedy who plays randy in the screen movies he commented on it said nice formula and i was like and i was hearing it in randy's voice too and i was like i'm like you mean jamie kennedy saw it or something like that because i don't remember if i put out a um like a blast or anything like promoting it saying you know i invite anybody who was part of the screen franchise to you know to tune in on the 25th when it drops on YouTube or something like that. And so it was like, it was just amazing. And to have that, I was just like, Oh, you know, I'm just like, this is amazing. And so, and then, you know, one of my friends was like, like, I don't know, like when <laughs> I was showing some, um, some BTS photos and everything, he was like, he's like, you're the killer, aren't you? And I was like, you'll have to watch this <laughs> thing. And I was like, <laughs> everybody like, saw I wish movie. I was. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they you probably would. And, th- and that actually brings up a very, very important point. Um, and I, I, I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day that people that have the ability, and I know it's grim and everything, but uh, come on, it's Reapers Underground. Get the fuck out of here. Um, <laughs> to die on camera is such uh, an amazing talent to have. Because it has to be believable, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, And it also makes you viable as an actor. Now, would you agree with that? Um, I would believe so, yeah. Because, like, you know, like, out of all the films I, you know, I died in and everything, it was like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't really, like, um wasn't really all up for like you know really long drawn out like agonizing oh, yeah. and stuff but then there was that one in some ghouls and stuff where i'm getting carved up like a pizza and stuff and then <laughs> when we finish i go next door to the restaurant and have a slice of pizza because i was like eh, i'm just taking a little bit off of here and just <laughs> yeah but that was fun to do as well and then um a lot of people still look at it and even like you know even with scream legacy i mean a lot of people saw it, and they know I'm the first person to get killed in it, and everything. And so um, I wasn't going to say that. Oh, four point four million people saw it, so they, you know, it's I already, know. Um, you know, <laughs> and Jamie Kennedy saw it with you. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jamie Kennedy saw it, so he told people, like, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, that guy got killed first, you know? It was really, really bloody and stuff. Because, like, and fun fact, that um, that blood splatter wasn't added until, like, much later. Because, like, it was originally, like, it was originally just supposed to be me getting, like, grabbed and snatched and everything. And so it was just, like, yeah, that's all that they filmed and everything. And then they move on to the next part of the opener and all that stuff. And then... um. And the guy who played, you know, who who donned the ghost face mask, he was really, it was, he was amazing in it. And it was like just watching him move in it. It was like, it's like wow, he really got the moves down, like just really like amazing and stuff. And then, and then I met um, the guy who does the voice for Ghostface. It's almost like really close to Roger Jackson, but like, I mean, not exactly like him, but you know, it's like it's everybody close. knows. It's like yeah, it's close enough because you know. Like, cause when you listen to Roger Jackson in interviews, that's how he actually talks almost, you know, he just has to like raise the creep factor on it and everything. And Isn't so that, that means, insane to have that voice, you know what I mean? Uh, and that's yeah, your that everyday amazing. voice. So it's like, could you imagine what it's like when he rolls up to McDonald's and goes to make his order? And he's like, yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's I'd your like favorite nuggets, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then a lot oh, of people had something on. Some people had a lot to say about it, you know, and then I'm like, I'm scrolling yeah, through the comments on YouTube and they're like, like, oh man, you got the janitor first. I'm like, he was just like one comment said, um, I remember he said, No, not the janitor. He was just minding his black ass business. <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> like i was just minding my black ass business i was because i was really because you know what like if he seemed tired like ready to go home or something like that that's because it was just like i had um like earlier that day i was just you know i was at lax you know trying to like like scrambling to get on a flight and stuff because something there was an issue with delta and stuff we'll get into that part later but then so i ended up like going all the way around like on the the what do you call it the the taxi thing to Southwest terminal. And just like, I got on the Southwest flight, you know, had a connecting one in Phoenix and then to Houston where we were filming. And a uh, good thing, the hotel that they had me in was just like not too far from the airport. So I was just like, yeah, I was able to just, you know, get in, settle down and, you know, decompress a little bit and then get changed and then just, jump in the uber and get on over to set and it was an amazing set too we were, we were filming in the woodlands and we're like everything wow. is surrounded by woods over there and i'm like it's like creepy cool as fuck so i was like i definitely want to go back there and visit again you know so that was just you know that was really cool to do and we all just kind of hung out on set and everything i worked only um 
I only worked one day, obviously, you know, <laughs> met right. some wonderful people and they're like, and you know, Zach, the director, he's just the absolute best. And it was just watching him work and everything. And everybody just, you know, just have like this, this, this great love for the franchise. Cause we filmed this before, um, before screen five was released. And so like when that one was, so, I mean, I guess so, um, cause it was, let's see, it dropped on YouTube after like, was it late March or something? Yeah. Two years ago, yeah. um, this March. So yeah, it was, um, so it was a little bit after five got released. Cause you know, they, they keep the, the plot line really secretive and everything. They don't want yeah. nothing. Yeah. So it was just like, so this one kind of just ignores the events of like four and five. And so is what it is. And so, but it was just like, they had a really, um, a really great love for the, uh, the franchise. And so that's what kind of, it came through in the final product too. And I mean, in my opinion, of course, totally. which, in most people's opinions, actually. And, um, and so that was just a really, um, a really great experience of mine. And even though I was just like only there for a short time and, um, it was great to like meet all these wonderful, like horror fans and everything. And these, um, these like these young filmmakers and all that stuff. And I was like, wow, you know, I'm like these, I'm like, where were y'all when I was in college? You know, because <laughs> everybody was like, very like, few kids were in the horror movies back then. So I was just like, <laughs> yeah. And well, so, um, you know, it, then, it, you know it, yeah, it just, it used to be one of those things where, you know, you could be a diehard fan. We didn't have all the conventions and stuff like now where fans can come out, they cosplay, they do all that stuff, uh, you know, like they do today. But back then, there, there really wasn't an outlet for that. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Because I was going to say, like, you could totally do like some indie, you know, con type stuff. There's plenty of them. Uh, shit, even Days of the Dead you could do. Um, oh, yeah? We need to have you there. I think you should be there. Um, you know, everybody knows on Reapers Underground, <clears throat> I bring you the best in underground entertainment. And David Perry is definitely someone you need to get in line with and start watching the films that he's done. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, we need to talk about uh, one of your upcoming films that's coming out. Springsville. Oh, There's yeah. nothing I love better than something that's kind of, you know, either loosely based on on, on a true story or just true story, period. So uh, kind of take us into that here for a second. Yeah, that one is about, it's an anthology horror, actually, believe it or not. And so... Um... Yeah, that one I met um, Les Nolan. He's amazing, you know, first time mm -hmm. filmmaker, and he's just like he has this like really great style to him. And I'm like, okay, cool. What we got here? And I'm like, okay, you know, we don't do like that. Okay, I like it. And so, um, <laughs> and again, it was something I filmed like in um, in like one day. All my scenes were filmed, and so, um, and so I was only in Ohio for like that weekend, and so it was just really. Um, I'm sure it that was, was really amazing. It was, you know. But like my, my hotel and everything was like, you know, right near the highway and I could see a sign where like New York City wasn't too far away. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna head to the Big Apple. Like I know which highway to take. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so that was, but that one was like very much fun and all that stuff. And then, um, you know, he had some like some stuff that was kind of like an Easter egg to, um, was that the John Hughes films, like the Home Alone and all that stuff like and i'm like oh cool you know and then there's like a little um a little wink and a nod to nightmare on elm street in there and i was like oh yeah because you know that takes place in ohio too so it was just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so that was um that was a fun weekend and so um and my character i'm playing like this um I'm playing this cop that always, you know, comes to the town of Springsville every Halloween just to kind of get to the bottom of like some strange mystery that happened and like like these really brutal murders that took place like some years ago that kind of just like I mean the character is kind of tortured by them but you know he 
he just always has that that drivenness in him to like come and face that you know so it's like that was a very interesting character to play as well and um very serious yeah it was it was you know i was like um because i'm used because at that time i was still used to doing um like horror comedies and stuff like that so it was like oh, you know sure. i could I can play it kind of serious, but like then with some comedic elements to throw in the mix and all that stuff. But this one was just like straight serious, you know, kind of, um, I kind of let my intense side show a little bit. And so that one was, um, well, that's good though. That one was really fun to do. Yeah. And that one, Hell I can't yeah. wait. To, can't wait till that gets released. It should be, um, I don't have an official date or anything yet, but, um, there's a short that's uh, Welcome to Springsville that's on on YouTube now. As of now, I think I think it's still up there. Yeah, it should be. But um, yeah, so that one was uh, that was really good, and that's uh, that's a good um, kind of introduction to the um, to the the official feature and everything. Absolutely, and we're gonna go ahead and roll the trailer. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that popped up again, so I need to oh, go. Pop up all the podcast. Whoa, hold on. There we go. Uh, like I said, you know, technology is, especially with StreamYard, uh, is not always the most fun. I have to share the screen first. So let's grab it real quick, and we're going to take a look at this trailer for Springsville. All right. Let me. Oh, shoot. There we go. A seven one one eight production. Less Nolan Phil. Springsville. Believe it or not, this was once a nice peaceful piece of land. Look around you guys. Do you guys see any fucking candy in the store? Nowadays, people just try to avoid it. Springsville. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, is that part of the lore? Uh, was there like a masked person doing these things in that uh, particular area? Hmm, I'm not sure, but you know, I'm kind of um kind of curious to find out. I'm like if that was the actual case. Otherwise, you know what? I think it could be based on a true story, like um Texas Chainsaw Massacre was based on a true story. Right. Yeah. And so like you know, that one was kind of like Yeah, you know. But it just like, kind of like, like took its own form. <laughs> you know, something like that, you know. I mean, it looks really cool, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, and everybody out there in the Morgrat universe, I think, wants to see this as well, uh, because it's right in our wheelhouse. <laughs> Very yeah. brutal. Uh, love the mask. It's totally killer. So yeah. definitely we will be looking for this uh, as the year goes on. And of course, here at Reapers Underground, we will make sure to uh, share any updates on it as we get it. Um, so here's kind of like the shameless plug time of the show. 
where can everyone find you uh, and, uh, you know, start to go through your catalog? Oh, yeah. So I'm on IMDb. So that way you can see all the um, all the films I've done. And, you know, you, you can also see some um, some BTS of the films I did, as well as like, you know, my earlier work and and uh, my reel and everything and Eclipse and stuff. And so um, and also you can follow me on my Instagram page, you know, official underscore David Perry. And so that's um, that's my official Instagram page. And, you know, you can also find me on Facebook and stuff. So, like, I'm sure there's, like, a bunch of David Perry's, but I only have that one account where, you know, I'm just, you know, <laughs> just got my classic, um, just got my classic scowl, you know, that kind of got me attention <laughs> in the first place almost. So I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> awesome. And then, um, you know, you can follow me on X as well. Um at David Perry 88. And so that's, um, that's my, uh, how do you say, that's how you can find me on social media, basically. <laughs> awesome. So very approachable, everybody out there in more Grot universe, you can feel free to send them a message. Um, and, uh, it, with any other questions that you may have, because, um, I think everybody was just a little bit more captivated by hearing, uh, you know, you talk up in the stories about each of the films and a lot of these guys are on, uh, Tubi. Oh my goodness. Yeah. A lot of them are. That's <laughs> for exactly. Like, even Tubi um, is the best place ever. <laughs> even my earlier films are still up there. The hostile takeover. That was my, that was my second feature film where it's, um, it's a comedy. And so, <laughs> Awesome. That was what I was going to do. I remember when I got the script for that, and I was just like reading it and busting up laughing the whole time. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wow, you know, like I can't wait to do this one. And that was, you know, and also another film, my first, um, actually the biggest film in my career at the time, not another zombie movie. I'm one of the stars in that. And so that one was, that one was another one. Before it got on Tubi, it was dropped on YouTube where it actually amassed 2 million views. Which holy is really amazing, and I was like, "Wow!" So it's kind of a cult classic, so to speak. So that one, I'm really proud of that. I have fond memories of that one as well because um, we filmed that one like in uh, 2014. Like, I think they because like everybody had you know at the time had jobs and stuff like regular schmegular jobs and everything like nine to fivers and stuff. So we had <laughs> to film like evenings and weekends. So like mostly weekends where it was like. So we filmed from like late January all the way to like the middle of September of 2014. That's, you oh, know, wow. so all that stuff had to be like spread out over weekends and stuff. And so it was like, you know, <laughs> trying to make sure everything remained consistent and everything. And it was just like, okay, you know, like, did I have facial hair then? Or did I have, I don't remember. Do I have, okay. <laughs> and then like, oh my God, funny story like so one of the like if you see the movie you'll probably notice it too because like i was watching it with a friend recently and he was like is that guy reading his lines on his phone i was just like and i'm looking at him <laughs> like oh my god because i think um yeah latoni who was playing that character he was just like attached like that day or something like that so he didn't really have his lines like together but it was sure. like he's looking at it and he's just like it looked like he was reading it and everybody was like is that guy reading his lines off the phone? I'm like, it, I didn't notice it at first until like, you know, a few years after it came out. And then like, and then like we were watching it, like had a group over to watch it and everything. And they're like, wait, is he? And I'm like, oh my God, he is. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. But that was just like, it's memorable. Basically it kind of adds to the, uh, you know, the overall flavor. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was, um, it was like a really fun laid back set. And, you know, this guy, Jay Davis and, you know, Dante Diesel, you know, the Chicago based talent and everything. They're just, they're the absolute best. And, you know, I was like, they were one of the first people I started working with after when I got out of, when I was getting out of Columbia and doing like mm -hmm. student films and stuff and everything. I was like, I started doing indie films and all that. And I was like, wow, you know, so it was like, they were just amazing to work with all the directors I worked with. They've been great and stuff, you know, and, um, now another zombie film. It was just, it was, you know, it was basically a parody of the zombie, you know, apocalypse, all that stuff when it was, um, oh, yeah. 
it was a big thing. We still had the walking dead that was in its prime, so to speak or whatever. And it was like, and we had all this, everything, everywhere you turn was just a zombie movie here, zombie movie there. So it was just like, okay, let's Makes do one. <laughs> yeah. And so, and it, you know, it basically it, um, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's just, you know, it's just, you know, get some popcorn and, you know, a few beers and maybe, maybe smoke a joint or two and, you know, just enjoy <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> although you can enjoy it, not, you know, you don't have to smoke <laughs> and, and drink to enjoy it too. It's just, you know, <laughs> yeah, cause I don't exactly. do either, do either of those things. <laughs> I mean, it's cool for people that do, but I mean, me, I'm just, you know, I was always, <laughs> slow, so, <laughs> and All then, good, um, brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was just like oh, an amazing right. film, and um, and it was really um, but that's also when I really fell in love with acting, and um, I fell in love with the um, the process of filmmaking too, because I met so many people. Like we had like hundreds of extras that wanted to come out and be zombies or be victims of zombies, like. I remember uh, this one mother who had like a five-year-old daughter who was like, oh, I want to get eaten by a zombie. And I'm like, oh, she does. Huh? I'm like, my kind of kid, you know? <laughs> Just, <laughs> oh, that's even had, like, um, <laughs> We even had some zombie kids, like, you know, eat one of the main characters and stuff. And it was nice. just, <laughs> was really cool. Was, that was a fun ride. You know, that was, um, you know, it was like, you know, you'll notice me like with this, Oh my god, and that helmet I wore in it because I play a mentally challenged character. And so I was wearing this helmet. I think it was um one of the director's kids' helmet and stuff like that. Cause they played like junior football or baseball or something like that. And the helmet was like two sizes too small. So that thing was just like <laughs> it was putting pressure on the on the noggin. Right, so it was like on your head. <laughs> yeah, but it came off pretty easy. I didn't have I didn't have dreads or nothing like that back then, but it was just like so it kind of fit really well and stuff. And I was just like, but it was still like, you know, I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. I, I don't have many lines, but you know, it's still, you know, it's still a good thing. So and I was just like, how do I, and I was like, but it came off pretty easy. I didn't have to, we didn't have to have no margarine on standby. So that's a good thing. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I it has been, been yeah, an absolute blast having you on tonight. Uh, yeah, and getting a, a look into this amazing career that you have going. Uh, so many great films, and um, I like we said before, everybody out there in the Morgrot universe, it is not hard to find his films if you're a Tubi subscriber or just download the damn thing. A lot of David's films are there. You can watch them. And they are so good. Um, and it's such a, a, a versatile actor as well. So many different types of roles. So it's one of those things that, you know, a lot of people talk about typecast people. David is not one of them. So, so much depth, so much awesome. He brings so much energy to his roles. Uh, and in my opinion, has worked with some of the best directors, <laughs> film companies in indie film right now so please yep. follow him he's so humble as you can very well see so don't be afraid to reach out say hey david i loved you in you know that one or this one or whatever so check it out that's why i've always said since i started this show three years ago the best art creativity is in the underground so I, I want to thank you so much, David, for joining me tonight. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. It's wonderful. Oh, absolutely. It was a, definitely a no-brainer uh, for me because I've been a fan of yours for a while. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I want to take the chance. I want to see if the man will join my show. And you did, and I'm so happy for that. Um, so for all would-be actors out there, uh, horror enthusiasts, what is your lasting message for them? I would say, you know, go for it and, and have a great time. You know, it's gonna, like, you know, as actors, you know, we have our challenges and everything and, you know, it's, this is a tough business on us and it doesn't apologize for that. And so, but Hey, you know, you still gotta so just, just show up and, and give it your all and 
celebrate the wins along the way, you know, even if they're not really big and, you know, just, just a win is a win is a win. So just celebrate them and just have a great time, you know, and even if it doesn't happen right away or if it happens really fast, just, you know, stay positive, be happy. And so, so it's, and it'll, it'll be fine. You know, just, um, how do you say it's, it just as cliche as it sounds, it really is the journey and not the destination. So it's just, you know, just, yeah, have at it and have fun. You're going to meet wonderful people and, and it'll be, um, you'll be proud that you did. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And, you know, at the same token, the most important thing you should always do is to remember to stay heavy.